Welcome back to Rob Schmidt tonight. As crime in this country skyrockets, the people who helped fuel this nonsense are now desperate to spread the blame for the skyrocketing crime. It's something to see. D.C.'s Mayor Muriel Bowser christened a downtown street in Washington as Black Lives Matter Plaza during the summer of 2020, which is basically like painting a huge middle finger to police in the heart of our nation's capital. And Bowser is now reportedly blaming her city's outgoing attorney general, Carl Racine, for a lack of prosecution in juvenile carjackings, a crime which has increased by a whopping 300 percent between 2020 and 2021. Well, Racine... The AG says Bowser and the Metropolitan Police are to blame, accusing them of not arresting hundreds of carjackers. Cases, he said, never made it to his desk. Data shows that while 426 carjacking incidents were reported in 2021, the cops only made 149 arrests related to them. Perhaps because Washington, D.C. cut their police budget by tens of millions of dollars. That could be one way. In New York City, Mayor Eric Adams is directing the NYPD to pull more than 600 cops off the desk, put them on patrol, to combat the problem here. And our clown Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg, a Soros style radical one, is actually working to stiffen penalties. Yes, you heard me right. It's simply amazing. Overall crime as of early February, up 42% compared to last year. Robberies up 35%. Look at rape, 35% up. As nearly every single police precinct recorded a spike in crime in the city. Five precincts, the rate has doubled. Let's bring in former New York City Mayor Rudy Giuliani and former NYPD Commissioner Bernie Carrick to talk about this. A couple guys that know how to fix a problem like this. And Mr. Mayor, we're going to start with you. You've, you've handled this problem before. But can you fix a problem like this when you have a Manhattan district attorney like Alvin Bragg in place? Uh, yeah. If you had a mayor who knew how to get control of him, sure. Uh, Bernie will tell you if I had a DA like that, he wouldn't be there very long. I'd go to the governor and I'd say to the governor, remove him, because if you don't remove him, I'm going to try to remove you. And uh, I, I, the, the life and the safety of my citizens is worth more than my vegan diet, which is what our useless mayor was on television talking about yesterday. I mean, he is getting a honeymoon while New Yorkers are being killed. Yeah. And it's outrageous. I mean, he ran on a law and order platform for a year. And he still hasn't put a plan in place. He put a bunch of play, plain clothes police officers out, and he identified them as police officers, which is like a clown show. That's a plain clothes police officer who isn't plain clothes anymore. Right. right. The things that he's doing are so idiotic that, uh, well, he holds the record for the biggest increase in crime for, for an incoming mayor in the history of my city. So stop going after Bragg. Put the finger on the guy who was elected, Adams and Hochul. Okay. They should remove Bragg. Yeah. And they should remove people who don't enforce the law. Citizens in all over the New York State are being killed, not just in New York City. Uh, not They are being killed in places that have Soros DAs. Yeah. It's now apparent that this entire crime crisis has been created by Soros' 30 or $40 million dollars that have been uh, put into DA's races in which re crime uh, records have been set. Sure. Last year, Philadelphia, more murders than in 235 years. That's after Soros got a and let me, DA reelected who doesn't prosecute murders. Right, let me get Bernie in here for a second, because as, as the mayor said, the crime numbers are staggering, shoplifting, looting, commonplace uh, in a lot of places. Um, and, and the funny thing is, as we talk about Alvin Bragg, this, this Soros-style district attorney in Manhattan, uh, he said that he's looking to charge thefts at a higher level, which I, I don't think people can really comprehend the weight of a statement like that from somebody like him. It's basically like him saying everything that I've ever believed in my entire time as an attorney has been wrong. And I'm basically admitting it right now. I want to I want to give people a harsher sentence. You know what, Rob, there's one thing the mayor didn't say, and I think people should know and understand this. Back in 1993, when Rudy Giuliani came into office, we had four to five times the violent crime and the murder that they have today. Yeah. Four to five times, and people said it could never be changed. It's never going to go down. It was criticized by the New York Times and all the liberals. And over the eight year period, we dropped major crime, violent crime by 65%, murder by 70. And in the black community, 
where the violent crime is the highest, we dropped the murder rate by almost 80 percent. The bottom line is it's all about leadership. Exactly. Alvin Bragg should be removed. The, the mayor could do it if he wanted to do it. He could do it by going to the governor. He could also do it by holding funds and pulling money from Bragg's budget. Bottom line is Bragg is a detriment to the city. He's destructive. He's going to he's emboldening the bad guys and he's endangering the lives, not only from, from my perspective, not only the citizens of New York City, but he's endangering the lives of every New York City cop that works in New York City. Mr. Mayor, watching the, the defund the police crowd, and there's so many of them, all of a sudden so many of them are getting tough on crime, like, like London Breed in San Francisco, uh, who was all about, <laughs> when it was fashionable, she was all about it, and now she's out there screaming about the nonsense and the crime in her city. What's your message to these phonies, to these people? Well, first of all, that's a, that's a, good, that's a good issue. Uh, New York City's police department was defunded by a billion dollars. Adams could put the money back. He has it which is a good indication that I, I don't let the mayor off the hook in New York City. Mm. The mayor of New York City has tremendous power. Uh, this district attorney could be contained with one conversation between the mayor and the governor. Now, London Breed was living with one of, uh, one of Soros's worst DAs, uh, Boudin, Chesa Boudin, son of yeah. two terrorists and a communist himself. He was an interpreter for Chavez. I don't want to hold the sins of the father and mother who are police killers against the son. But this guy was working with a communist. Yeah. So she supported him. Plus, the stupid people of San Francisco elected him. Right. So please don't get insulted with me, San Francisco. But next time, don't elect an interpreter for Chavez to be your D.A. Otherwise, you're going to get murdered. You got to think. Bernie, your final thoughts on all this. I think it's all about leadership. Yeah. You know what? The mayor and I have done this. People say it can't be done. It can be done in Chicago, Atlanta, Minneapolis, Portland, Seattle, Baltimore, and many other Democrat-run cities around the country if you had the right leadership in place. And until they get that, until the citizens elect the right leadership, it's going to stay the same. Great conversation with two men that know how to get stuff done. Former New York City Mayor Rudy Giuliani, <laughs> former NYPD Commissioner Bernie Carrick. Gentlemen, thank, thank you. you so much for taking the time. Good to see you both. Thank you. Thank you.